All right, this uh, first video here for Chapter 1 for Pre-Calculus is just basically on functions. And it actually covers uh, several sections, not necessarily 1.1, but it covers several sections in one. We're just trying to get covered. But actually, a lot of it's mostly from Section 1.4, but that doesn't matter. The first thing we want to talk about is exactly what is a function. We talked about a function basically being a number we don't know yet. So we have this function notation that says, hey, here comes a function. It's got x in it. We talked about the fact that, that x could be any letter. It doesn't necessarily have to be an x. But the key thing that makes a function is a function is that every input has exactly one output. And what we mean by that is inputs are x's, outputs are y. And we're dealing with functions, we also call that y f of x. So anytime an f of x, and f of x is the same thing as y. So just kind of keep that in mind, f of x, y, exact same thing. So every time we put an x in, that's that mystery number, we better only get one output. And let's give a quick example here. Here's a easy, easy function, 3x minus 5. For example, if I use an input of 2, when I plug 2 in, I get 3 times 2 is 6, 6 minus 5 is 1. There is no other value I could ever get besides 1. Like if we came back tomorrow and plugged in 2, we're still going to get 1. If we came back in a year and plugged in 2, we're still going to get 1. 3 times 2 minus 5 is 1, no matter what. Same thing with any other value. If I plug in 3, 3 times 3 is 9, 9 minus 5 is 4. You're always going to get 4 when you plug that into this function, no matter what. We can even plug in other values like negative 6. And uh, this might be a little bit tougher for me to do in my head here. I don't know. It's a tough one. 3 times negative 6 is negative 18. And negative 18 minus 5 is negative 23. So once again, this is a function because no matter every time, no matter what, we plug in negative 6, we're only going to get one value, negative 23. That's it. You could think of it in table form if we got inputs x and we got outputs y, or remember, outputs are also f of x. Um, obviously, writing a y is a lot faster, but the same thing. If we had a uh, table that looked like this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and let's say 1 went to 7, uh, 2 went to 7, 3 went to 7, 4 went to 8, 5 went to 8, and then down here we had another 5 that went to 9. That would be an issue. 1's allowed to go to 7, 2's allowed to go to 7, 3's allowed to go to 7. Now they all go to 7, and that's not a problem. Remember, the rule says every input is only allowed one output. 4 going to 8, 5 going to 8, that's okay as long as they both go to 8. That's not a big deal at all as long as 4 doesn't go anywhere else. Here's the issue right here. I have 5 going to 8, and then a second later I got 5 going to 9. That means that the input of 5 has two outputs, 8 and 9. That can't happen. You can't be in two different places at once. You can think of it like that. So that's the basic definition of a function. That's kind of what makes a function a function. Now, when we're talking about functions, one of the key things we want to be able to find with a function, we talked a little bit about this in class, is the domain. And the domain uh, is basically a list of all possible input values which, remember, input values are x. So it's a list of all the possible x's. Now, for most functions, that is a very, very long list. For example, let's go back to our 3x uh, minus 5. For this type of function, the domain, so we'll just use a d, the domain is literally all numbers, all real numbers. Very, very simple to understand, all real numbers. And I'm, I'm also going to explain it like this, negative infinity, to infinity. All numbers negative infinity to infinity. Every number in the world works. There's no issues here. However, one issue that could occur is if you see square roots. Square roots can cause some issues. So let's do the square root of x minus 5, for example. Now, square roots cause an issue because that's an ugly looking 5. Hopefully everybody just believes me that that's a 5. There we go. Looks a little bit better. Hopefully uh, you're hearing me that you cannot have negatives in square roots. You can have positives, you can have zero, but you cannot have negatives in square roots. So this x minus 5 right here, like we talked about in class, is nothing more than a number we don't know yet. Well, that number cannot be negative. 
that number, x minus 5, whatever that number is, again, I don't know what x is, so who knows, but that number has to be greater than or equal to 0. It's got to be. So as long as that number is greater than or equal to 0, I get a function that works. Because, for example, think about um, 1. 1 minus 5 is negative 4. You can't have a negative. So obviously the input value of 1 doesn't work. We're looking for possible input values that do work. So um, again, the number inside x minus 5 has to be greater than or equal to 0. Add 5 to both sides, I get x is greater than or equal to 5. So my domain is all numbers x greater than or equal to 5. As long as the number is greater than or equal to 5, you can use it as an input value. I also like to describe the domain as an interval, meaning the interval starts at 5, comma, it goes towards infinity. And we use a bracket on that 5 to say that we include it. So every number, including 5, comma, infinity, are the numbers that include. If you're okay with just this notation here, at the inequality sign, then you're fine. And that's um, uh, one of the domain issues. The second domain issue is f uh, functions that have an x in the denominator. And let me give you the real basic easy one, 1 over x. The issue with fractions is you're never allowed to have 0 in the denominator. The numerator can be anything it wants, but the denominator cannot be 0. It could be negative, it could be positive, but it can't be 0. So whatever number is in the denominator, in this case it's x, cannot be 0, or else we get something that's undefined and it doesn't make sense. Because remember, we need to plug a number in and get a number out. Well, if you plug 0 in for x, you're going to get an error. That's not a number, that's a word. So again, for this particular problem, the domain would be all numbers, all real numbers, with the exception of x cannot equal 0. Let's do another really easy one as well. Um, f of x equals 1 divided by x plus 2. So again, this bottom part cannot be 0. So what number makes the bottom 0? Well, hopefully you see that on your own. But if you want to figure out what makes it 0, just set it equal to 0. Subtract 2, subtract 2. Oh, yeah, negative 2. So if I use a negative 2 plus 2, I get 0. So my domain would be all real numbers with the exception of x cannot equal negative 2, because negative 2 would make me 0. Um, the top could be anything. Let's do one more quick example. The top could be something crazy like 3, well, not crazy, I guess, but 3x plus 2. And the bottom could be 3x minus 5. I don't care about the top. It can be anything. It's the bottom that cannot be 0. So 3x minus 5. 3x minus 5 equals 0. So I'm going to let it equal 0 just for a second so I could see what value makes it 0. Add 5, divide by 3, and you get 5 thirds. So the number I cannot be is 5 thirds. So the domain would be all real numbers. And by the way, the symbol for all real numbers is a R with a little extra line right here. So it looks like a bold R. So it's R with that little extra line. So that's a way we could write this shorter. So all real numbers with the exception of x cannot equal 5 thirds. All right, so that's it for domain. Hopefully that makes a lot of sense. Let's move on to the next most important thing when we're dealing with functions, and that is zeros. The zero of a function is any value that makes the function, we call most functions f of x, equal to zero. So any number that makes the function equal to zero. How do you find such numbers that make you equal to zero? Well, I don't know. I mean, there's a whole bunch of different ways you can do it. Um, one way, the most important way to start at least, is just to set it equal to zero. So let's say we have a function. This is the first example. f of x equals 7x minus 4. I want to figure out what the zero is. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn f of x into zero, because that's what I'm going to look for, the number that makes it zero. So I'm going to set zero equals 7x minus 4, and all i got to do is solve for x. Add 4. 4 equals 7x, divide by 7, divide by 7. So the value that makes me 0 is 4 sevenths. So there's my answer. If I would plug 4 sevenths in, i get 0. So remember, you can get any number you want. You can get a lot of different numbers. But the number that most specifically we like to look for is the number that makes you 0, hence why it's called a 0. Let's look at a second example. It might be a little bit trickier. Uh, x squared minus 25. So again, I try to figure out what number makes the function 0, so turn the function into 0. And then all you got to do is solve. This actually can be solved uh, in two ways. One way is add the 25, 
And how do you get rid of a square? Oh, yeah, square root. But to get rid of a square root, uh, you got to make sure you use the plus or minus. Anytime you make the square root, you need that plus or minus in front of it. So the square and square root cancel, and I get x. The square root of 25, hopefully you remember, is 5. So I actually get two answers, plus 5 or negative 5. So the two values are 5 and negative 5. Both of those numbers will make me equal to 0, hence why they're called zeros. Um, let's do um, a couple more examples here real quick. This is a pretty important part of the class f of x equals x squared minus x minus 20. I want to find the zeros, so that means turn the f of x into a zero. It's really, really easy. x squared minus x minus 20. Now, how do I solve this? Well, if I add 20, and then I got these x squared, I got an x. How do I isolate one of them? It's pretty difficult. So actually, to solve this problem, you need to factor you got to be able to factor if you're going to do well in this class. So how do you split up an x squared, x, and x? And I need a 20 in the back. That means the two numbers I'm going to choose to go here and here have to multiply to get 20, but they have to add to get the 1 that's right here. Remember, there's really a 1 on that x right there. So I'm going to choose 5 and 4 because 5 and 4 can multiply to make 20. And if I choose a negative 5 and a positive 4, they're going to add to make the negative 1 in the middle. So x squared is there, the negative 20 is there, and then I get a 4x on the outside, a negative 5x on the inside, and that makes my negative uh, 1x in the middle. Now, I'm still not done yet, but this is good news because once I'm in this factored form, one of these two guys must be 0. So x minus 5 must be 0, which means x equals 5. Think about that for a second. 5 minus 5 is, guess what? 0. x plus 4 could be 0. Uh, subtract 4, subtract 4. x equals negative 4. Why is that a 0? Because guess what? Negative 4 plus 4 is, what do you know, crazy, 0. Um, so hopefully that problem makes sense. Sometimes you do have to factor. I know it's not the funnest thing to do in the world, but it's not too, too bad. Um, let's take a look at another example here. Um, maybe a problem where we have a fraction. Okay, so f of x equals 3x plus 7 divided by 4x minus 5. Well, to be quite honest, what did we already talk about? The bottom cannot be 0. So to be honest, when I'm dealing with a fraction, I don't care about the bottom. All I really care about is the top. What number will make the top equal to, guess what, 0? And again, the bottom can't be 0, so don't even worry about it. Subtract 7, negative 7 equals 3x, divide by 3, divide by 3, and x would equal negative 7 thirds. There's my answer. As long as it doesn't make the bottom 0, I'm safe, because I'm looking about what number makes the top 0. Um, so again, hopefully those problems aren't too hard. They're not that bad at all. The key thing you want to be able to do is find domain, and you want to be able to find zeros. And as long as you can find domain and zeros, um, you should be pretty good for this first section.